Principles of Symmetrical Components Part 1b. In this part we'll talk about the balanced set of three phase voltages and currents as well as phase rotation or phase sequence. Now these two concepts are very very simple and we won't spend a lot of time here but if you feel like this is way too fast then there's another video tutorial that's presented by General Pack and we go through these concepts in great detail in that particular video tutorial. The link can be found below. Okay. Now suppose that we have these three phasers, right? Let's call this phaser IA, this phaser IC, and this phaser IB. Now by inspection, I can tell you that this is a balanced set of three phase currents. Now how do we know that this is a balanced set of three phase currents? We would have to verify three rules. Now rule number one has to do with the angle. Rule number two corresponds to the magnitude and rule number three is the sequence. So with respect to the angle, we would have to have equal displacement between all three phasers. And what that means is that the angle between IA and IB has to be 120 degrees. Okay, the angle between IA and IC that also has to be 120 degrees and the angle between IB and IC well that also has to be 120 degrees. If the angle displacement between all three phasers is 120 degrees, we have completed rule number one. Now rule number two has to do with equal magnitude between all three phasers. So if the magnitude of IA is equal to the magnitude of IB, which is equal to the magnitude of IC, then we have completed rule number two. Now, we know that the magnitude of IA and IB and IC is equal to each other because the distance between this origin point here and the end of the tip here for IA is equal to that origin and the tip of IC, which is equal to the origin and the tip of IB. So the length of phaser A is equal to the length of phaser B, which is equal to the length of phaser C. So if that is true, then we've completed rule number two. Now the sequence has to do with the phase sequence of these three phasers. So let's clean this up a little bit. The sequence is a little bit more trickier. Now in all of the engineering standards and a lot of the papers out there, we always assume that the phasers are rotating in the counterclockwise direction. Okay, now if all three phasers are rotating in the counterclockwise direction, then the question is what is the sequence of these three phases now by inspection i can tell you that it's a c b now how do i know that now suppose that you place a stationary mark here if you place a stationary mark here if all three phasers were rotating in the counterclockwise direction then we know that phase A is going to hit the stationary mark first. Now as they rotate, we'll see that phase C is going to hit the stationary mark second, and then phase B is going to hit it last. So by inspection, we know that the phase rotation or phase sequence is an ACB phase sequence. Now before we conclude here, I just wanted to say one more thing about this phase sequence. Now suppose we had an A, B, C phase sequence. Now how would these phasers change to make this an A, B, C phase sequence, right? So now we're not looking at A, C, B anymore. We want A, B, C, but we also have to note that the phasers would still have to rotate in the counterclockwise direction. So as the phasers rotate in the counterclockwise direction, we want phase A to hit the stationary mark first, and then phase B to hit the stationary mark second, and then lastly phase C, which means IA is going to be here, and as IA rotates in the counterclockwise direction, in this direction here, then we know it's going to hit the stationary mark first. Now we want IB to hit the stationary mark second. Now the second phaser is also going to be rotating in the counterclockwise direction. Now notice that the second phaser was IC. So all we would have to do is we would have to move 
I B here and I C there. So all we're doing is we're, f we're swapping I B and I C. Now it, as I B rotates in the counterclockwise direction, it's gonna hit the stationary mark second. And then as I C rotates in the counterclockwise direction, it's gonna hit the stationary mark third. So this balanced set of three phase current has a rotation of A, B, C. And that concludes this video tutorial. Now if you want more details, just click on the video tutorial link that's found on the bottom of this particular video. That video goes into much greater detail on these two concepts. Now if you haven't subscribed already, please click on the button on the bottom right corner of the screen to subscribe to this channel. Now if you have any question, there's a link to the forum on the bottom of this video. Please go ahead and submit your comments or questions on the forum. Thank you.